Hey there, this is part 3 of my WebDriver IO tutorial series. If you'd like to check out my previous video in this series, make sure to click on the link below in the description. Alright guys, so this one is going to be a fun video as we will begin to write our test from scratch. Now let's take a quick look at what we will be doing in this video. So I'm going to be using eBay as an example site throughout the series for our tests. So for our first test, we'll keep it simple and create a basic search test. So for that, what we'll do is write laptop in our search input value and then click on the search button. Once we are on this page, there are a couple of things we'll do for our session. First, we'll verify that we are on this page by verifying our title. Second, we'll verify the value of the search input field. And third, we're going to verify that this drop down gets updated to PC laptops and netbooks. Okay, so really simple test but this will give us a good understanding of how to write our own test from scratch. So let's get started. So I'm back in Visual Studio Code. This is where we left off last time. So what we will do this time is first delete this basic.js file and then create another file under the same specs directory, call it search.js. Okay, now here we'll start writing our test. The first thing we need to do, as we discussed last time, is create our describe block. And then let's name our test something. So this would be a collection, so I'll name this eBay product search. And then create a function. Then let's write our test. So the first thing we need to do is create our it block, and in the it block, let's name our test. So in the, for our first test, we'll probably open up the URL, the main URL, which is ebay.com, and then verify the title. So let's do that. So it should open the main URL and verify the title the function. Okay, so we did this last time. So if you'd like to try this out on your own, pause the video, try it out, and then come back. For those that would just like to watch the video, let's get started. So we need to open our URL. To do that, we will use browser command and do dot URL and then open our eBay um, URL. So we'll paste that URL here. So let me open that up. So I'll copy this and then paste it here. Okay, next thing we need to verify our title. So we'll be using expect for our session library. It's exactly the same as what we did last time guys, nothing different here. Dot to have title. And then paste our title here. Okay, so let's find what our title is. Right click, inspect. So do you remember how we did it last time? We do control F, find the title. Okay, there you go. This is our title. I'm gonna copy the whole thing. Go back to our test and paste it here. Okay, so it reformatted my code, and there it is. Okay, so our first test is ready. So let's try to run this test before writing our more test. So this is this is something we'll implement throughout our series. We're gonna try to write really small test, try to get it working, make sure it works, and then we'll start implementing bigger and bigger pieces. Okay, so we open a new terminal, type our command here using our CLI, search for contract.js. Right, it's opening up a Chrome driver. There you go, it opened our ebay.com, ran our test. I open this up. Okay, there you go, eBay product search should open the main URL and verify the title. And one test passing awesome so we have finally have our first test working now let's move on to writing our second test so for the second test we're going to write it in a separate it block because we don't want to be writing multiple assertions in a single it block we would want to try to isolate our test as much as possible to one assertion and then for everything else we're going to write it in separate it blocks so in this scenario what we're trying to do is we are going to be searching for a product and then verify the search text value. So we'll say it should search for a product and verify the search text value. OK, 
Okay, so how do we write our test here? Let's head back to Chrome. So there's two actions we're taking here. First, writing something in the search input field and then clicking on the search button. So there are two elements that we are working with. So let's try to find our first element, which is the search input field. To do that, click on this select element icon and then hover it over to the search input field. So if you see our input field is highlighted in the DOM here. Next, we need to find a unique selector for our input field. So to find a unique selector, you should start with looking for an ID first. As that will always be unique in your DOM and it's just easiest to work with. If that's not available, find a selector using class or build your own custom CSS or just copy it through an XPath. The key here is to make sure that your selector is unique. That means you should only see one node available here. However, this won't be the case every time as in some cases you will have to work with duplicate nodes. We will dive into those in details in our later videos. Also as a side note, I always struggle with finding unique selectors in the beginning. So it took me quite a while to figure out how to build custom selectors by understanding the DOM structure. So let me know in the comment below if you find this a bit hard too and want me to create a short video on this. Okay, so let's head back. Um, over here for our input field, we have our ID. This is great. We can just copy our ID, which is GHAC. And I'm gonna paste this here. Okay, so obviously when I paste it here, you see there's 13 nodes here. We don't want that because it's trying to pick up everything related with GHAC in the beginning. We just want an ID. So to select an ID, you just add a pound or a hash in the beginning. Okay, so there you go. Our uh, input field is selected again, and we just have one unique node. So we'll copy this selector and then head back to our Visual Studio code. And here we'll paste this. Okay, so what we need to do is first wrap this up in a string. Second, wrap your element in parentheses. Okay, there you go. So this is how WebDriver IO reads a unique selector. Now, what we need to do is add this into a variable. We can use a let or a const. I can use const here and then call this search input. There you go. So we created a variable called search input and in that we have our selector which we copied from our DOM. So now we need to find our element for our button. So let's do that. Okay, so same thing. We're gonna select this, hover it over here. And there's another ID here. So that's great. This makes it easy for us. So we'll copy this. Actually, I'll just rename this GH button. There you go. And then I'll copy the whole thing. Head back to Visual Studio Code. And then paste it here. So same thing. Wrap it up in a string. Add a dollar sign. And then we will name this const search button. There you go. So we have our both selectors figured out. Now what we need to do is actually create our test. So that means take any action. So in this scenario, if we go back to our search field, what we are doing is trying to add a value here in our search input field. So to figure out what command we need to use here, we can just head to WebDriver IO. And if you go to their API, scroll down you're gonna see something with value so there you go add value so we can use this so it says selector dot add value and pass in the value there what we want to put in so they also give you a really nice example so we can do something like input dot add value and then add a value there so this is kind of our same thing what we're trying to do on in our scenario so let's do that so we will do search input dot add value and then here we're trying to search for laptop. So we'll put that there. And in this scenario for what we're trying to do is for a button, just do a basic click. So they have in their API, you can use click, which is pretty simple. We'll do search button dot click. There you go. So we have our two selectors. We took our actions on those selectors. We added first value in our search input. Then we clicked on the, our search button. Lastly, we need to add our assertion. So for assertion, what we're trying to do is that verify that our search 
text value has the key laptop that we are putting there. So that's easy to do. We can do our expect for our assertion. And in this scenario, we previously were using browser, but now we're trying to verify our input. We would do search input. And for assertion, instead of saying to have title, we will be using to have value because we are trying to verify the value. Should see, I'm gonna put laptop here and then save this. Okay, so if you wanna see how I figured out that we need to use to have value here, once again, we can go in our documentation and if you go to expect, which is the our assertion library and if you scroll down, you're gonna see actually over here, element matchers. So something with to have value or anything with value basically you need to find. So there you go, if we have a to have value and you can use it this way. So your element dot to have value and what value it has and any optional parameters you wanna send. You can also do to have value containing where if you don't know the entire value, you can just use a certain value that contains this key. Okay, so I'm gonna head back to Visual Studio Code and then try to run a test here. Okay, so it's opening Chrome driver again. Type the laptop, click search, awesome. So this time we see two tests are passing. And this is one passed, that means for the spec file, that means we ran one file and in that file we ran two tests. So both of our tests passed. So we are finally able to do our second assertion, which is, which is search for product and verify the text value. Now let's try to do our next test. So for our next test, we will verify that it should redirect to a new page and we will verify the title of that page. Let's create that. I'll say it should redirect a new page and verify the title. Okay, so this one is gonna be just a single assertion. We don't really need to take any action here. So we'll just do expect our browser that to have title and then our title. So let's find what our new title is. So on the laptop when I Search for this laptop keyword. We arrive on this page. Let's try to find our title here. So same thing here. Um, it's nothing different. Okay, so if you see our title got updated to laptop eBay, so we'll just update to that. So that's it. So this was a nice short test. All we're doing is verifying that our page is redirecting to a new page and it should have this title. That's it. Okay. We can try running this test, but I think it's a really small one. So let's just run a new, create a new test and then try to run both of them together. So for our next test, we will verify that our search category gets updated. So let's do that. It should update the search category. Okay, so for that we need to find our selector and then do our assertion. So let's head back to Chrome. So this is what we're trying to verify. That our dropdown value here should get updated to PC, laptops, and netbooks. Previously, it was all categories. Okay, so to do that, we will once again select this field. And here, if you see, since this is a dropdown, you cannot just directly access this value because over here, there is no text available for you to access. So you click on this dropdown here, and within that, you're gonna see a bunch of all those drop-down values. So if you see here, PC laptops, and then you have the next laptops and netbooks, computer tablet, and networking. So we wanna pick the first one. So in our select here, we have our ID. So actually that's already copied. So we found our unique ID here. Now we need to access option. This is where we will be building a custom selector. So what you do is, we need to access the option. So we just type in option there. Now, as you can see, it selected the first one. However, if you notice, it's picking up all 39 nodes here. That's not what we want. We want just the first one. So to get the first one, typically what you can do is there's 
a CSS selector that you can use which is anath dash child one so what we are saying is pick the first child in this so in your select element pick the first child if I do this let's say second it's gonna pick this third and so on so we need the first child here so I'm gonna copy this and if you now see it's unique here now let's head back to Visual Studio Code and create a variable call it category and then same thing here there you go and next we need to do our assertion so in our assertion we are verifying that the category should have text which is what we are looking for there so it should to have text so this is another expect api you're gonna find which is dot to have text just like the other one we had and here we're gonna copy what we had before which is pc laptops and netbooks okay i can't seem to copy this i'm gonna edit where can i see edit as html copy add back paste and i'm just gonna remove this to just end and then save this okay so this is our test now let's try to run both of these tests along with the other ones and see if it works There you go, all tests ran and it passed successfully. If you scroll up, for passing. Awesome. So both of our new tests that we created are working now. There you go, we have our all four tests created from scratch. So if you have any questions or you got stuck somewhere, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to help out. So in the next video, we'll create a separate spec file and write some more tests and cover different types of expect assertions. Hope you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up if you did and also make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit that bell icon to get notified of my newly uploaded content.